Hello and welcome to another week of Movie Magpies. This week we will be dissecting I Am Mother. As always, I'm Will, your host, and with me is my co-host, Monique. Let's just get straight into it. Oh boy, I have a lot to say about this movie. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So if you haven't seen it, what are you doing? This is the part where we're d- dissecting it. Spoilers are warned straight from the bat. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. We're going if you haven't straight watched it, into spoiler territory. If you haven't watched it, turn this thing off. You can come back to it. We're, <laughs> we're released every Friday, so it doesn't matter. Go watch it. But if you don't know what, the, what it is and you feel like you're not worried about it being spoiled, just so that you've got a little bit of... I'll provide you with the summary. Following humanity's mass extinction, a teen raised alone by a maternal droid finds her entire world shaken when she encounters another human. Alrighty, so that's our summary. This is a very, very interesting film, um, and I'm sure Will and I will be getting very much into our views about it, but once again, there is a spoiler warning on this one for the entire discussion, because if you haven't listened to our 30-minute review already, what are you doing? Go watch that and come back. Yeah. Go watch that, watch the movie and come back. I'm going to... Yeah, I say I know there's a couple of people who watch this despite not having seen the movie because they uh, don't care about spoilers. Looking yeah. at several people in particular with that one, mm. feel free to stick around, but it's not our fault if you hear something and it's spoiled for you. Yeah, and it could be from, like I say every single week, it could be from a different movie. You know, we might spoil something from a 30 year old movie. And we could spoil something from a movie that we watched last week or the week before as we yeah. bring it up for comparison. You don't know. There's that, yeah. And ultimately, that's on you because you're watching the spoiler filled episode of Movie Magpies. <laughs> it's nice to have you. I suppose, first off the bat, I do want to get a couple positives out of the way. I did mention yeah. this in our 30 minute um, review, but I really, really, really love the visual storytelling. I love mm. that they do a show don't tell with no dialogue for the first sort of, you know, like 10 to 15 minutes. I love the yeah. uses of red and white as the primary colors and then only using grays, black, and the tiniest bit of blue sort of sporadically throughout yeah. the rest of the film. The visual style is is just beautiful. There's no denying that. Speaking of visuals, the CGI is amazing in this oh, movie, God, yeah. which we'll talk about a little further down. Getting more into what I actually want to discuss is what the fuck was up with the plot? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so the plot is just I'm not gonna I'm gonna try not to be quite as harsh about it, but the plot, the plot stretches thin very quickly and then falls apart by the end. It kind of reminds me a little bit of when you're watching like a TV daytime soap opera yeah. where they just keep adding in very dramatic shock value type of twists yeah. for no reason other than shock value. <laughs> mm. I also find it weird that they tried so hard to make Mother come across as, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Untrustworthy. Untrustworthy, dangerous. In that, like, I think we can both agree the first 10 minutes, 20 minutes of the film are impeccable. They're beautiful. Yeah, and it's also super interesting that they take such a twist where they make Mother the villain. Here's the thing, because of the first... 10 minutes or 20 minutes or however long we get for the first bit where no words are spoken it only helps reinforce sympathy for mother yeah that's exactly what i was about to say it's so interesting that they make her the villain later on yeah because with their sort of no dialogue exposition dump sort of i say expedition dump it's very well done sort of first 20 minutes where you see daughter growing up and turning from an infant into a teen, it only helps sort of attach you to mother yeah. as she grows, like, with the growth of this we child. Can't, we can't gain sympathy for a child. <laughs> She's a child. No. She's a child. She has no character <laughs> development. She just needs to she live. She does ballet no. and folds paper cranes yeah. with her mother. Like, what was cool. And the robot's kid. keeping her alive. So, of course, we're gonna, well, we are going to have sympathy for mother. And I also would say one reason we have sympathy for mother is the CG and the character design is so clever in mm-hmm. that 
mother is a droid that has been designed specifically for raising children and caring for the next generation or next chapter of humanity. She's got, like, little heating pads on her yeah. chest. She's got a little radio in her arm so she can play lullabies to the kids. She has these two little uh, white light circles yeah. that move up and down her face to indicate her, like, expression and whether or not she's smiling in, like, a very abstract way, but yeah. still there. It indicates it indicates a personality without her having to talk. Mm-hmm. And... They have Mother voiced by Rose Byrne. Yeah, Rose Byrne. Who has such a soothing voice. So you just immediately out of the bat see this droid as a very maternal figure, which stereotypically, and in the first 20 minutes of this film, is viewed as a positive stereotype of maternal, protecting caring, comforting, you know, we yeah. have all of this positive association with Mother. Yeah, and because we're not introduced to our main character straight off the bat, we only have Mother to latch onto, so we associate with her story more. Mm-hmm. But as, as we're talking about Mother straight off the bat, I may as well bring up my pointless research. So this, oh. this week's pointless research... The one thing I think both of us noticed immediately through the very minimal exposition we're provided in the first 10 minutes, because you're given a few boxes of, not boxes, like a few lines of text to indicate that the world has ended and this vault is the last recesses of humanity, but they're all embryos. So there are 63,000 embryos on, like in, I don't want to say storage because that feels immoral. Within <laughs> the vault. Yeah, being kept within the vault, and they're... In cryo. Yeah, they're in cryo sleep or whatever, but they're being... But they can be brought to life. That sounds terrible. They they, <laughs> they, they, they can be birthed within 24 hours, so that it's not a nine-month waiting period. However, I think the one thing that both of us noticed was that Mother was the only care droid within the vault. Yeah, my first note for this entire film after, ooh, visual storytelling is, are there supposed to be more Robo-Mums? Like, yeah. why is there only Mother? Yeah, no, it is, it's weird to me to think that 63,000 embryos, and of course, you wouldn't just birth all those embryos uh, at the same time. I actually did, I did the maths on this. This isn't, isn't actually a part of my pointless research, but I thought it was interesting anyway. How is this not part of your pointless research? It's not, because it's, it doesn't answer my, it doesn't answer the question of the one mother dilemma, which is right. this week's pointless research episode. <laughs> a 24 hour birthing period for 63,000 embryos would take 63,000 days, which is roughly seven years. It is roughly seven years. In total. But I would say that it probably wouldn't take that long because you can see sort of visually that you can have, I think, max five embryos developing at once. Yeah, and like I said, this isn't my pointless research because it's it's just a noticeable point in in total, in the total amount of 24 hours and time, it would take about seven years. Not all at once or, you know, not individually either, but... It would. That's the amount of time that would go into each of bringing each of the embryos to life. Just but, bringing them as into yeah. like infant life, not even raising that do, them. That, however, doesn't matter because mother, I assume, has all the time in the world. But my pointless research is that there are sixty-three thousand embryos in this vault and only one caregiver. At the start of the film, we see a lone operator within the vault. We also see multiple bunk beds and classroom chairs within the vault, which with further spaces for further bedrooms and classrooms in the future. And in the film, we come to understand that Mother was meant to make multiple children, but chose not to. Instead, Mother chose to raise one to be the leader with the intention to raise further after daughter had proven capable of leading. The facility was equipped to house multiple living organisms with food being provided from outside and water being regularly provided from the outside world that had become almost a farming space for the living inhabitants of the vault. Mm -hmm. We know that multiple children could be uh, birthed at a time and we also know that the vault intended to have multiple children within the vault at a single time. However, there is one thing that wasn't automated and had to be done by mother by hand every single time. That was the production of formula. 
baby formula. So in the film we see mother and daughter hand mixing the milk for the new children, indicating the main process to feed the newly born babies has to be done manually. And the milk only keeps for like 24 hours. Exactly. The most important thing to remember is that mother is the only caregiver. She's also the only machine able to provide directed warmth with her heat mats. She's also, other than daughter at this point, the only living, well not living, animate object that can sentient. sentient well not even sentient just moving the only moving process that can make the baby formula mm -hmm. we also have to remember that mother has to recharge every night mother can schedule her recharging for a single infant and would be able to raise a single child without risk of running out of charge however two newborns rarely share the same sleep cycles so the possibility of mother scheduling recharges with two children is unlikely doing the same thing with Minimum, a minimum a classroom worth of newborns would be statistically impossible. This indicates that if mother had followed her directive, which was to raise enough people to build the future of humanity, they would have died out within less than a week, since the vault was ill-equipped to raise more than one child. Huh. Which is quite a morbid thing to think about in that, of course humanity wasn't prepared to continue on into the future, because they couldn't raise the, they couldn't raise the future of humanity within a vault, you know, yeah. even on an automated process. Just to bring this back full circle, I suppose. Yeah. It this lends back into the fact that mother is the only mother. Lends yeah. back into the fact that this is a really really interesting concept, which both mm. Will and I agree should have stayed a short film. Yeah. Um, rather than a feature length film. Specifically because once you extend the concept a little more, it wasn't given time to be fleshed out properly. Yeah. Uh, and you immediately run into um, plot holes like, why is there only one caretaking robot? Yeah. Exactly. If we had a shorter space of time to, to see the story pan out, we wouldn't question that. Because ultimately, what, we got 20 minutes to watch a film? Maybe you think about we... it in hindsight, but that doesn't matter because the film is over. If you're thinking about this stuff in the film, then it's just not necessarily doing a good job at keeping things moving. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I suppose in hindsight is a really good way of looking at it. If the yeah. film was shorter, you would have in hindsight thought, oh, should there have been more mothers? Should there have been more caregiving robots? But then you would have been like, the film was only 20 minutes. They were probably only yeah. just showing us like the starting process. Maybe there's a storage room full of other mothers. Um, <laughs> yeah, Coraline. other mothers. Um, well, well, yeah. <laughs> other good. mothers, you know, further into the bunker. Yeah. But because it's feature length, we find that in, in the final sequence, when Mother's trying to defend herself, basically, from daughter, no other Mother's... The only, like, other robots to come and attempt to stop it are coming from outside, so we know that there are no other Mothers inside the vault. Yeah, or robots and in general. specifically just because of the plot. Yeah. And the fact that it was stretched out a little too far. Yeah, that which is you... just such a shame, because... If suddenly this... have no plausible deniability for some of the plot holes. Yeah. If you want to know my opinion on this film, I think if it was 20 minutes long, I would love it. The fact that it's almost two hours long. It's 113 minutes, so... Yeah, 100... It's... Oh, so not... Yeah. Just under two hours long. Just under two hours, yeah. So, but the fact that it's just under two hours long means that I just can't get on side with it. Mm-hmm. But, and... yeah... It's super, super interesting because a lot of the questions that I had in the first sort of 20 minutes were like, oh, there's only one child being raised. I wonder why yeah. that is. Oh, I wonder where the other mothers are. Which, um, like, if, like, if we can talk about that as a positive immediately, that's such a good hook. That's such a good story hook because you mm -hmm. know that there are more children. Embryos. To, well, there are more embryos that should have been birthed at the same time, but we only see one. That's such a mm -hmm. good story hook. It's genuinely like this film really hooks you in mm -hmm. and i suppose what i said to you was i would have really appreciated if the conflict was an internal rather than external yeah force. absolutely so the plot of the movie as we said is that um this daughter um teenage girl is raised all her life with just a droid and then 
has her entire sort of like world rocked yeah. when another human she meets another human who comes from outside the bunker mm. i would have really liked it if there like the discussion of why there was only one child being raised at once was more of a when a child raised by a droid uh grows old enough to question her reality she realizes why she's the only child left you know sort of thing of i would have really liked it if they had have taken that hook of wait shouldn't there be more caregivers and like run in that direction rather than the oh external extra person direction yeah absolutely i think if they wanted to fix this there are multiple ways that it comes so close to being great in that it can be fixed if you made the conflict internal with a sense that the outside world was actually dangerous. That would be great. Because mm, really, we're not shown that the outside world is dangerous. No. Um, we're, shown, we're told that there's radiation outside or contag- contagion? Contaminant, yeah. We're shown that there's contaminants and contagion outside. Mm. Or at least that's the story that's given to daughter by mother. It's also really interesting that nobody in this movie has names. It's... Daughter, Daughter, mother, mother, the woman, the woman. and the brother. Yes. So no one has, like, name names. We, um, here's the thing. That's a very short film thing, which is, wh- which is why I talk about how if it was a short film, it'd be great. Because mm-hmm. you can't have a feature-length film and just have characters with no name because it's forces, it doesn't give us a chance to actually identify with them because they don't have names, so they're just... Mm-hmm. They're, they're practically numbers. There's an inherent short form need with any ambiguous content. Because yeah. really, if you have almost two hours to expand upon the theory and the um, concept, it would be less ambiguous. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely. And I suppose you see the same thing in, like, short stories, like little tiny baby novellas where a lot of ambiguous, I love that you, you know, call it tiny baby novellas. This is, like, I tiny <laughs> tiny baby nerd novellas. <laughs> As it's, it's just yeah. a little baby book. It's not finished yet. But, you know, with Silence of the Lambs, the entire mm. reason that it works is because it's short. If it was any longer, you would immediately run into so many, so many difficulties. So it's all based upon and dependent on the timing. And unfortunately, the thing that this movie gets wrong is the timing and yeah. the tension. Yeah, no, the, the pacing is just not great. Mm-hmm. in that because it, it's, it goes on for like the pacing expands out far too long. And then you're left in this sense where it's just like, oh god, I feel tense, what's going to happen, what's going to happen, oh, I'm no longer tense, I've been waiting for too long, there's no way I need to be tense because I expect something to happen now, and now I know something's going to happen because we spent so much time waiting for something to happen. And then if nothing happens, you're like, well, that sucked. (laughs) It's interesting to me because sometimes these more horror adjacent movies because this isn't yeah. particularly a horror it's no. definitely more within the sci-fi um genre but horror adjacent or things that are trying to build tension and stress if only for you know the release payoff don't particularly do it right even some horror movies pull that tension out a little too long to the point where you're like well i've been expecting a jump scare for so long that, yeah like, well that's basically all about pacing when you work in film long enough if you want to work well with pacing you need to understand it innately because some filmmakers do this amazing thing where they know pacing and they'll let the pacing the tension draw out until you no longer feel tense and then fuck with you and yeah and that's that's what makes it worse because you can no longer trust the pacing of the film but Again, like, I don't want to talk about this kind of thing because it's just not in this film, so there's no point. But basically, the pacing is done really, really badly. I mean, not really badly, but the pacing isn't done well, and unfortunately it leads you to question the plot because the plot is obviously stretched thin and they add in drama and plot twists for the sake of padding the runtime. Yeah. So, for instance... Our sort of main catalyst for the rest of the story is that 
this teenage girl, daughter, fixes mother's hand and later on while mother is recharging there's a power outage and mother doesn't come back on so daughter has to go and find the source of the outage yeah and it's a mouse that has somehow gotten into this airtight bunker and also (laughs) has been strong enough to chew through these industrial cables yeah which is also like such a again an indictment on the vault itself and humanity should have been let to die left to die out if if a mouse could shut down this vault yeah, this vault is supposed to survive the extinction event that killed off humans. Yeah. Well, technically and it, it did, of... but then it didn't survive a mouse. Except technically it didn't, because we find out that, um, obviously, we've already warned, spoilers, you've been warned several times, but we find out that Mother is the extinction event. Yeah. So, well, technically it didn't. <laughs> I mean... Yeah, I guess mer- there's merit to say that it didn't, but then there's also merit to say that it's it was still a, an extinction level event. It just wasn't like nukes dropping. Well, actually, we don't know. We don't know what the level of. We don't know what mother did. Well, we don't know what, because we can't even say that it's completely mother either. Mm, and a lot of the reason that we can't say it's completely mother either is another thing that I wanted to bring up about this film is the dialogue is incredibly ambiguous. Yeah. It almost hard to decipher first watch round like i Mm. didn't realize the first time i watched this movie that mother was what sparked quote unquote the end of the human race like you know um she sort of talks about it and how she started the extinction event but it wasn't until the second time i watched it round and i already had you know the four knowledge of what was coming yeah. that I actually realized that's what she was saying that what she wasn't saying is that humanity was destroying itself so I started humanity fail self early like that's what I thought it was the first time around and then right. when watching it again I realized oh no she started killing people and even then that was well, like just up to the ambiguity of the dialogue no in in the film like humanity's pretty much ending itself but mother finishes off the rem- the remnants which is interesting because when you um, read a plot synopsis, it says that she, Mother um, is the AI that controls all robots, um, yeah. and she started the extinction oh, really? event after becoming convinced that humanity would destroy itself. Well, that yeah, that's just which not, just speaks to the speaks ambiguity to the of the ending of the movie and of the plot dialogue because it's yeah. so. Like, they have to tell you everything. Like, you never find out any of the plot twists yourself. You're always told by one of them. They have to tell you everything, and then it's almost always too vague. Exactly. And that's, (laughs) yeah, that's not good storytelling, because it's like, well, is that what it's supposed to mean? And then they're just like, well, we told you, and it's like, but we didn't tell you as well. So then you have to, you can make your own answers, and then once you make your own answer, they're like, no, that's not right. And it's just like, ugh, really? But even with the knowledge that mother started the extinction event i i still don't find her the least reasonable character which is annoying because it's like she should be yeah because it says that uh, you know she sort of goes on this spiel at the end of the movie that she started killing humans because she saw that they were going to destroy themselves yeah so basically she just as an ai who has I suppose an emotional like an objective look at humanity rather than yeah. a very subjective emotional attachment to humanity that say a human would have mm. realized that it wasn't going anywhere quickly and rather than waiting for them to destroy themselves and possibly the earth in the process she was just kind of like whatever i'll do it myself you yeah. know and iconically for how hard they go trying to make a mother look like the villain especially with the I am the AI that controls all robots, not just your mother. Yeah. Spin that they put on the end of it. I'm still like, yeah, okay, but is she wrong though? Like. Well, yeah. Well, it's it's also this thing, the sense that in the event of an apocalypse, the ruling power, the strongest power, and the one that guarantees to return a sense of normalcy is usually the one that's in the right or dictates the path forward. And mm-hmm. and like there are all these you know, apocalyptic films where it's like, we have to restore what came before. And it's like, what came before didn't work. Yeah, and I suppose that's exactly what she's doing. Um, 
I suppose I might give a little bit of context here yeah. to why Daughter thinks this is so abhorrent, and it's because she finds out yeah. with absolutely no foreshadowing or any sort of, you know, pre-weaved plot that there were two other daughters before herself. Yeah. Um, it's revealed that the first ever embryo's identification code was APX01, and daughter's identification code is APX03. So yeah. she finds that there were two other daughters before her who mother killed because they didn't measure up to her sort of morality standards. Yeah. And she finds this so abhorrent and upsetting, well, and that's why she thinks the extinction event and everything that mother's done is horrible. Which Yeah, absolutely, like, on paper is, uh, is terrible and awful for sure. Uh, and I'm not going to disagree with that. It's absolutely terrible. The only issue with that is that this girl, the daughter, is, what, 17, 16 years She's old? She's a teenager. It's yeah. said in the plot synopsis, in the, you know, um, summary on Netflix that this, she's yeah. a teen. My problem is with it, this discovery, it's it's almost provided for her because I, I, like, I stopped the film while we were watching it at this point because the only reason she figures it out even though she's provided like examples of well provided information on previous uh daughters who were aborted as it's like written in in the files she goes to check it out and she checks the furnace and there's so much ash in the bottom but the film makes out a point that mother is very like aware cleanliness. of yeah very aware of cleanliness and this Ultimately, seventeen years worth of ash face. is just still in the is still in the bottom of the furnace. Yeah, it wouldn't happen. And also, no. this fire is hot enough that it completely incinerated not just a mouse, but the glass bottle that the mouse was in. Yeah. Do and you really think there's going to be bones left well, over? Like it it incinerated all the bones except for the jaw. So it's like, why didn't it incinerate the jaw as well? Because of plot convenience, which is the mm -hmm. which is like. The and plot, the how plot does, moves everything forward. The yeah, plot and how does daughter forward. find out that mother grew these other embryos and had other children before her? Because mother tells her that a bullet that they remove from um, what's her name? I just call her the survivor. I think the survivor the woman, slash yeah. woman yeah. Um, from the woman. They sh mother says it the bullet that was lodged in her um, hip was f the same caliber as in her gun. And daughter, daughter goes to confront the woman yeah. who goes, no, she's lying. Check the bullets. Did you see the bullets yourself? Mm. So um, she takes the broken hand that she fixed at the start yeah. um, to bypass the security and check the bullets, which don't match. And so she digs a little deeper and suddenly finds all of this, like, data on the other yeah. daughters that came before her. And you're like, what? Why didn't mother why? just get rid of this stuff? Why wouldn't you immediately? And it's I also mean, actually, very I know why odd. I didn't. Because it's data. But, it's data, um, yeah. you know, there's this kind of interesting point where she's so quick to trust this human who comes to her with a bullet wound and brandishing a weapon at her. Well, not and at so her, but she had well, a weapon. Yeah. yeah. Um, but she's incredibly aggressive. Oh, yeah. This, and she immediately turns against her own mother. Like, this yeah. droid has raised her for 16 to 17 years and has shown that she's been a really good mother. I think it's actually in the plot that she says at one point when they find out that there's no contagion outside and that it's droids started hunting humans. Yeah. Mother goes, do you see why I didn't want to tell you? I didn't want you to look at me any differently. Have I ever been anything but a good mother to you? And I'm like, yeah, honestly, yeah. go off. You're she completely did. correct. Yeah, um, this Daughter has no reason not to trust mother, but yeah. immediately distrusts her when find... it's convenient for the plot. Oh yeah, sorry. And what I find like so jarring is that her her moment of questioning her reality is brought about seemingly from nowhere, in that the mouse event hasn't happened yet, so nothing's come in from the outside world. 
but she's just like, what about the world outside? And then she starts distrusting her mother for, like, seemingly no reason, where it's like, as far as this girl knows, mother can only provide the honest truth to her. Yeah, as and far as she knows, mother cannot lie, and yeah. even then... She doesn't have any reason to doubt that Mother would yeah, be lying exactly. to her until the mouse comes in. At which case, Mother could even have just said, just because a mouse can survive doesn't mean a human can. You know, yeah. like, the mice may not be um, susceptible to the contagion. Like, that's a perfectly reasonable answer. And yeah. it's just never brought up. Yeah, and she, do you think it's probably a good time to talk about Daughter? Yes. In that, so this character is so like set up so early on in the film to be the next leader of humanity to be morally and intellectually better, better. than other humans she is remarkably stupid for someone who is supposed to be this person like they're giving her you know lessons on um can't, like yeah, can't philosophy and, and uh, utilitarianism conf- philosophy we find out later in the movie that she's the one that performs surgery on the survivor yeah but she's so stupid oh my <laughs> god she's remarkably stupid they make her out to be so intelligent so thoughtful and then yeah. she immediately just throws all logic to the wind the yeah, second and that she it's such a shame because more often than like she's supposed to be this smart intelligent character more often than not she's doing something really dumb in that yeah the and you can come, understand sorry. you could understand that she's doing something dumb if it was for the plot like not for the plot yeah i mean like in a high tension situation like for instance she's really really smart when she catches the mouse and that's kind of what really upsets me about this is it's not even a she's never been in emotional yeah. or under emotional duress before and that's why she's making stupid decisions because we see that she's super like scared and stressed when yeah. the power goes out because she can't wake up her mum like obviously you would be upset about that but she still manages to catch the mouse without having to touch it with her hands yeah. fix the repair and take the mouse back to mother while yeah. the power is out and she only has like lamplight to go off like it's established early in the movie that she's cool under pressure despite not having much pressure before and then suddenly there's another human and she's like what pressure is horrible and i can't make good decisions ever well i was gonna say with the mouse specifically it's like the first instance we're given insight to her being a bit like just generally kind of dull where she's asking questions for the sake of the plot but it makes her come off as stupid where mother gets the mouse and she's like where did you find this? And she means, like, inside inside the vault. But daughter asks, do you think it came from outside? And it's like, no, no we, have, we have mouse embryo pods. Yeah, exactly. Where do you, where do you think it and came from? I know that she's sort of, like, it's meant to come off as she's asking that. Like, oh, if it came from outside, then outside yeah. might be okay. But in that case, she should have said it was near the, like... Yeah. bay doors or like you know near the airlock because yeah. there's an airlock, there's an airlock. Um, <laughs> which is the next point could've... for being stupid oh gosh I know but you know it's like it was near the airlock yeah. how do you think it got inside immediately yeah. would have seemed smarter than do you think it came from outside do you think it like, came from outside yeah just a couple of and that's exactly what we're saying with the even the dialogue is like a little bit off yeah <laughs> And, like, we, we're not going to, like, cover scene for scene, but with the with the airlock scene and airlock section, it's just this insight to this character who, like, doesn't think anything she's ever been taught or anything she knows. And in, in moments of, not even crisis, but moments of action, she just, it's like brain off onto, onto the next thing where the survivor comes into the air, well, is, like, knocking on the front airlock door. And she's been shot, and she needs help. Which, also, just a point to make, she comes there for help. And, and then immediately later is like, You trapped me here! You trapped me! Oh god, I'm gonna be <laughs> murdered by these people who I came to for help. Humanity yeah. is so stupid in this Roll movie. the dice. Yeah, but she lets her into the first phase of it, and then puts on, like, protective gear and hazmat kind of gear. Get in there to attend to her. And then, once she's opened the door, she takes her fucking gas mask off 
I know. She sort of like puts on all of this protective gear with a gas yeah. mask on to open the first door of the airlock. So we're not even like yeah. at the outside world yet. And then she takes her mask off so she can stick her like face near the door yeah. and like listen for the mo- knocking. And then literally a scene later, she's left the hazmat suit for the survivor to put on. And yeah. the survivor puts on the hazmat suit. She passes out. In, passes in the... out daughter goes in no no hazmat suit of her own mind you yeah. there's none of this uh, of course in this day and age we know oh, no. she has, the, she has the hazmat suit on but then she chooses to go rummaging through the survivor's bag with her bare hands yeah that's what i'm saying is yeah. she doesn't have a hazmat suit on when she goes rummaging through the bag yeah, she leaves the hazmat suit she was wearing for the survivor and doesn't put another one on yeah it's just it's and then insane. gets stressed when the survivor wants to take the mask off to drink yeah. the glass of water that she left for the survivor to drink. Like, yeah. like what do you, what? <laughs> do you... Do you expect me to pour it through the hazmat suit and lick it from the, like, interior? Oh my it's, gosh. It's so, it's so weird because it's like, it's, this stuff is so hard to forgive because you're, it's your main character. She's supposed to be the hero. And she's just so dumb in points where you could just, even just depicting her as having common sense means that she would come across as so much smarter, but she just comes across as really stupid and it's weird. It's so weird to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I suppose as we were saying is mother is meant to be intimidating and we're meant to be wary of her. You do get a good sense of that in the scenes where she's like running. For sure. Yeah, yeah, when she runs, she's like a fucking track star. Like, yeah. she's literally a robot. Like, the second that she has to do anything with any force, it becomes incredibly apparent that she has the force of a robot. Yeah. Um, I will but, say, both times watching it through, I actually love those points where she just starts running. I'm like, oh, shit. Shit's yeah, about like, to especially go down. she's second like on charge yeah. and the alarm goes off and she's immediately running. And I'm like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. Ooh. Like, it's really interesting to see. But for me, that wasn't even like a, oh, she's intimidating. I was like, oh, she's like mama bear mode. Like, she's she's... coming to protect her daughter. You know, it wasn't like, she's a big scary robot that's running to hurt someone. It was like, oh, she's heard the alarm. She wants to make sure her daughter's okay. And then they try and, like, make Mother out to be the villain when Mother just isn't being an idiot. Like, the alarm goes off and she can't find her daughter. And then later when she finds her daughter, her daughter has a, the survivor with her. Yeah. And then later on, daughter wants to run away with the survivor and she's being super anxious and jumpy and her hands are shaking. Yeah. And mother immediately figures out that something's wrong and locks her in a room and we're supposed to think that's so, like, mean. Yeah. She literally just was like, ah, survivor has literally tried to get my daughter to go outside. Mess with her um, head, yeah tried to turn her against me her maternal and only yeah airing figure even in that sense to give it just a little more context the survivor's like tactic of bringing her around is so laced with deception that watching it through a second time you are certain that you just feel like no this woman's up to something yeah and she's just so untrustworthy and again like all the humans in this film are idiots. <laughs> yeah, she she comes to the vault for help, and she's like, "Help me, help me!" And it's like, clearly, you would know that this is a building or a facility that has been built with the robots or dozers in this world in mind. So mm-hmm. she she goes to this place knowing that the risk full well. She gets inside, see that sees that there's a ver- a more peaceful and kind-hearted, well, a more peaceful and less threatening looking version of the dozers outside and goes you've trapped me in here to kill me oh my god you've trapped me in here to kill me you've kidnapped me and it's like she you came here she really almost dies to sepsis because yeah. she's unwilling to even take the medicine that has been yeah. touched by mother but then you know once daughter who is smart enough to perform surgery but stupid yeah. enough to believe every word that's ever said to her by anyone yeah and it's it's one of the it's like in my head this logic was when she's her bullet wound is infected and mother provides her with antiseptic and she's like no that shit's poison or whatever if this is an un as far as you know this is an unfeeling emotionless robot if it wanted to kill you it wouldn't be wasting poison on you 
It yeah, just, and this it is just all, slam her after head into a like wall. a moment of aggression from Mother. When Mother yeah. first finds the survivor, she fucking like pushes her up <laughs> against a wall and almost yeah. like crushes her windpipe, you know? Yeah. Um, and the reason that she doesn't is because Daughter asks her not to. Mm. And then suddenly when Daughter asks her to help and the robot seemingly listens to Daughter and goes yeah. to help her, she's like, nah, 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 you're just going to kill me again. Yeah, like Mother couldn't me have just killed her in the Some first other instance. Way. Yeah. Why would she go to all this effort to kill her, like, sneakily with poison in a needle? Like, yeah, what? This, this woman's logic, the survivor's logic is, like, sure, she's probably paranoid from living out in the wasteland for so long, but it just comes across as so weirdly un- illogical, if you get what I'm saying, in that she's just like, no, I'm not going to take that antiseptic because you're providing it to me. If the mm-hmm. girl had handed it to me, I would have taken it. This is your fault. And it's like... And then there's this whole thing of, like, she doesn't want the robot with literally, like, mechanical, non-tremoring hands to do surgery to remove the bullet. She wants the teenage girl to do it because she trusts the teenage girl more. Yeah. What? Sorry. Like, not even getting to the point that daughter is smart enough to do surgery, but still an idiot. In what world would you lie to this girl to try and get her to come with you because you think that she needs a better mother figure slash yeah. not a robot as her only but, caregiver, yeah, and but also trust weird. her to save your life? Yeah. Like, she's simultaneously treating daughter as incredibly naive and manipulate, like, very yeah. um, easy to manipulate, and her only chance at survival. Yeah. Absolutely, and it's it's so weird because, again, yeah, what is there to really benefit from for the survivor to take the daughter out mm-hmm. of this place? When you know, she ends up getting daughter out of this place, yeah. she goes, oh, we're going to go to the mines where we've got all these other survivors. Yeah. And then instead of going to the mines, they go to the beach and she lives in like a shipping container that's yeah. washed up on shore. And she immediately says that there's no point going to the mines because everybody in the mines is going crazy and doing horrible things to each other. It's just me and this dog that is suddenly a yeah. part of the and the, you the dog and was we a nice only yeah. I'm going to be honest. Yeah, we love a dog. Every but like every post-apocalyptic film should have a dog in it. I exactly. Think. We love dogs. They're we man's best friends. But you know, it's just me, you, the dog, and all of the droids that are constantly trying to find and kill us. Yeah. And that's better than you being in that facility where you were safe and had a mother that cared about you. And they left a baby with the droid? Yeah. Like, if you're really that stressed about her being such a bad influence on this daughter that she's raised for 17 years yeah. without issue, why would you leave an infant child? with her yeah exactly well it's like the survivor's motivations are so weird because it's like she has absolutely nothing to gain from taking the daughter but then she takes her against her will in that in the scene where they're escaping at the airlock she's got like a sharp piece of ceramic i don't know what yeah. like thing it is it's, it's like a her. piece of uh wood or, or something that she yeah. forcibly yeah, chipped free, out yeah. of the like that she forcibly chipped out of first aid area. What do you yeah. call it? Uh, medical bay. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, but like she she take basically takes daughter hostage and gets her out and like mother again proving that she's the most reasonable character lets them go because she does not want daughter to be harmed. And the best way to mm-hmm. ensure that that she's not harmed is to agree with the well not to agree but to accommodate this per- this wildly unreasonable and ultimately unpredictable individual. Yeah, and then the second that they get outside, daughter's like, you cut me, I can't believe you cut yeah. me. And the survivor's like, oh, I didn't mean to. And she's like, oh, okay, that's fine then. Whereas yeah. every other time that she's even had a second to doubt mother, she's immediately gone on the defensive. And when mother has come out with a perfectly reasonable explanation for her yeah. decisions, daughter's been like, mm, but you're still distrustworthy. This yeah. woman yeah. holds a knife to her throat and she's like, it's water under the bridge, it's all forgiven. Like, Yeah, it's this thing where it's almost the most glaring point of the plot's attempt to make mother the villain is this point where she's been kidnapped and pulled out of her home and she's like screaming for mother to mother no please 
and she's pulled out and then when she comes back in she's like I gotta kill mother yeah it's interesting that daughter spends so much of this time being suspicious of and scared by mother yeah. yet every single time she's put in danger or taken away from mother her only thought is to mother can help me or yeah. I need to get back to mother yeah, and then the second weird. that she's back with mother she's like you're distrustworthy you're going to do something to hurt me like babe you can't have it both ways again like her character is so thinly spread that another point where it almost feels weird is daughter for the entirety of the film has talked about getting out of the vault and seeing what's out there and then she gets out there and she has no emotional response to it she gets to see the sea and feels the the seawater hit her shoes, admittedly. She meets a heckin' dog. She sees she sees a dog. It's a this creature that she's never seen before, only in origami and probably digitally. But then she's just like, this is a thing. And then She's has, got no emotional reaction she has no, to it. Yeah, she has no emotional reaction and it just feels weirdly stunted in that it's almost like she's achieved what she's achieved her want and it just doesn't and matter. To it play a bit matters. of devil's advocate here. Oh, please do. Um, you would say, oh, she's in shock because she just found all of this stuff out about her mother yeah. and, like, had a knife held to her throat. Of course she's in shock. Yeah, of Except course. at every other point of the movie, we're shown that she reacts really emotionally to everything, you know? Yeah. So the fact that she's very emotionless here just makes every other time that she reacts badly to mother seem hysterical I suppose would be the like, way that yeah, I would put this it's like yeah you could be like oh she's in shock um, yeah, so absolutely. she's not taking it in fully like she's just found out all of this horrible stuff about her mother except yeah. when she found out the horrible stuff about her mother she had a very visible reaction mm. and we never saw her go into shock from it she's always been the next step or very you know stuck to her convictions yeah. and then the second that she's out and she's met her convictions through it's like oh, okay well now I'm in shock I'm going to agree with your devil's advocate point because it was quite interesting that you played devil's advocate and then contradicted it. it yeah, yeah rebutted it completely which is fine but like I want to believe that she was just in shock but her character almost seems inconsistent yeah it's because time. she's so apathetic as a protagonist and so um yeah. moved by the plot rather than the person moving the plot yeah and that's, it makes that's a shame her emotion re emotional reactions seem overblown or mm overreactions and it makes any time she doesn't react seem weird like yeah absolutely. yes she could have been in shock this is a perfectly reasonable reason to be in shock but wouldn't you have been in shock when the survivor who by the way when she holds that like piece of sharp ceramic to daughter's throat that's not yeah. the first time that she's just forcibly just yeah. trapped daughter like she also when she first saw the droid and daughter called out for mother because it's her goddamn mum yeah took her pushed her up against like a piece of um piping and like held a hand over her mouth so that she wouldn't alert the droid to them yeah but it's done very aggressively yeah it's the survivor has only ever responded with like aggression and it it always feels really weird it um because it doesn't feel weird to me. Weird. It's understandable no, yeah. considering that like the um droids are what shot her and the droids are yeah. what have been hunting She's her. She's suspicious and paranoid from living out in the real world for some. But also why are you so quick to trust someone who is so evidently having if not a psychotic break, a fever induced stress, you know? Yeah. She's wounded, she's losing a lot of blood, she's probably not in her right mind, no. and yet you immediately trust her from the get-go, even when she's still groggy from, like, waking up from having surgery. You're like, oh, everything this woman says is completely psychologically sound. The human characters feel very inconsistent, and what's worse is that Mother is, very, is a very consistent character, but she's also intended to be the villain at the end, but she's so consistently reasonable and objectively within the parameters of survival she's right 
Yeah, objectively and yeah. subjectively, a couple of the things that she's done have been incredibly horrible yeah, and absolutely. would be considered immoral and unlawful by any standards. Yeah. On the other hand, everything that she's done has come with reason and logic, and it's all very, very sound logic because of how consistent her character is. Yeah. So you sort of get stuck in this moment of, well, yeah, you shouldn't be trying to kill every human that's outside of the bunker. And the fact that Daughter is the third embryo to have ever been born is really, really upsetting. Yes, but also, absolutely. we can see what you were going for, and we can see why you thought it was best to create a better version of humanity yeah. before fully starting humanity again. Uh, though, ultimately, that being said, I will play devil's advocate in this point with the whole... the, the two previous daughters. Did they really need to die Probably yeah. not. They could have just been, like, in a weird way, they could have been demoted. Just children to have around, you know? Yeah, and in a sense, even if they weren't the, the next leaders of humanity or, you know, the next potential leaders of humanity, they could still help Mother in taking care of the next generations and the embers being Yeah, they being could born. have been caregivers yeah. rather than leaders, which is evidently needed, considering yeah. there's only one Mother. With that perspective in mind... Mother does come off as almost unreasonable in terms of failure. Yeah, she's very unreasonable in terms of failure. Yeah. But and then to play another sort of moment, we're given such a like inconsistent and frankly upsetting view of daughter. Like we feel like daughter is stupid most yeah. of this. Thing. We're given this but sense. But at the very end, idiot. mother is convinced of her moral, moral and ethical strength. Yeah. And that she will be the next leader of humanity. I'm like, this girl was gullible three ways till Sunday. Yeah. She saw another human being and immediately distrusted a robot. Like, yeah. And what's worse in my mind is that when daughter comes to confront mother who has her new baby brother like resting and warm and taken care of the first moment that daughter holds onto son or her brother brother yeah she she holds him wrong and and it starts hurting him mm -hmm. and he starts crying and then she and then mother's just like you can lead humanity yes <laughs> this this girl right here who's just who's within five seconds hurt this baby Mm -hmm. You will save humanity. And it's just like, uh, no, just say that she's not. Actually, if she'd been like, no, you're not worthy to lead humanity, and then daughter had to be like, but that's not for you to decide, and then fucking smashes her up, then I would have been actually more on side with her. But she yeah. doesn't. But mother goes, and here, it's the sort of thing as they've been trying to make mother out as an emotionless results-based robot who yeah. doesn't care about anything but results with, of course, the two previous daughters. Yada, yada, yada. But she's obviously emotionally attached to daughter because daughter has been stupid this entire time. Yeah. And she's still like, you are my greatest strength. You are yeah. the leader of humanity. I will leave you to take care of this entire facility that I have also slightly destroyed trying to get you to stop hurting your brother. Yeah. And you will be completely fine. I believe in you. So, like... Mother is obviously not, like, this is the only inconsistency with Mother, is they're trying to make her out as emotionless, results-based, yeah. and ruthless. But she's not. She no. obviously has a very tender and caring spot for Daughter. Um, even though Daughter immediately takes her brother, holds him too tight, and then, like, lays him down on the floor yeah. while she recklessly tries mm. to load a gun. Yeah. What? Just, what are you doing with the baby? Please leave the baby yeah, alone. Like, just don't do this stuff. As as we're getting closer to the end of this episode, I wanted to kind of leave it on a slightly more positive note. I wanted to talk just a little bit about more about the visual style in that that's it's consistent throughout the film and it's still incredibly good. But just a point that I wanted to bring up because I noticed it on my second time through and I thought that's actually really kind of cool. So we've talked about the color palette and the use of very minimal color. Mm -hmm. One thing I noticed, only on the second time rewatching, the only actual color that is brought into the vault is provided through the humanity. In that 
the jumpsuits are red. So the jumpsuits that the people wear are red, or the daughter wears are red. And the mm -hmm. origami is made from daughter and mother making origami together. Yeah. So the color that is brought into the vault is provided through humanity. Which is really, really nice. And just to round it out... I think it's a beautiful out, visual motif. Because I know that we... Yeah. And just to round it out, because I know that we said we would discuss it, visually, yeah. this movie is beautiful. Oh, and absolutely. meaningful in its visuals, which is yeah. really nice. What but I the love... CGI... Oh, yeah. Go ahead. Sorry. ...is really, really good. Like, we said it before, um, that you really can't tell when it's the gentleman who plays mother i yeah. think his name is luke hawker yes in mother like the 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 robot suit versus when it's cgi and the only reason you can tell is because the hands become slightly bigger obviously because it looks like he's wearing gloves yeah, other absolutely. than that i could show you like side by sides of cgi versus not cgi mm. and you wouldn't be able to tell the difference because of how purposeful and well-designed both mother and the visuals are. Yeah, the CG is very masterfully done. It's it's one of the best humanoid-based forms of CGI that I've seen in years. Next to probably Davy Jones from Pirates of the Caribbean. That one oh, can that never that can never that. be surpassed, but this is pretty damn close. It's so mm -hmm. good. Another point that I actually really wanted to bring up is the the visual motif of lighting as well in that I noticed within the vault they use a lot of fluorescence in actual facts it's not fluorescence they're all LEDs but they look like fluorescence in the film but then through the airlock you see natural light or warm tungsten light coming in through which is really intriguing to me because yeah. usually natural light is more blue <laughs> Yeah, like, un unless it's like Golden Hour, which I think it was trying to emulate. Yeah, which is, I love that it was trying to emulate Golden Hour. Yeah. But it's so intriguing to me that usually artificial light is considered the more like yellow bulbs. Um, yeah. And natural light is considered the more sort of quote unquote white or blue light. Um, that's the whole reason why technology well, is bad for you because it emulates blue light and it keeps you awake because it's closer to daylight than normal like yellow bulbs. I don't. Um, I don't want but, to contradict you, Monique, but that's not hmm. true. Is um, it not true? No. So the warm tungsten lights are more akin to replicating natural light, whereas the blue to white so to a certain point white is probably the closest you get to sunlight but if you cross into the blue spectrum it's more representative of cold light and oh, that's probably that's probably more telling on areas in which you live in that if you um you know around more predominantly cold light then of course it, blue is going to seem more realistic but it's but yeah, actually the tungsten the light is more light is so like um bad and how it dictates your sleep schedule is because it more mimics the light that keeps us awake yeah well that's that's any sort of light in a sense you shouldn't be looking at bright white light because it is a sensory reset not so much okay. because it replicates natural light but evolutionarily it replicates light well, I'm definitely living up to my name as the one that doesn't know much on this podcast, which is perfectly fine by me. But I really like that they use the warm light versus the white, sort of more blue light yeah. in that way. Like you say, everything in the facility seems cold unless it's touched by human hands. Yeah, and I, I, I really like that visual motif. And they do it, for the most part, quite well throughout the film. Hmm. And I got no, I got no problems with the visual style. The visual style is really, really lovely and really nice to look at. Even the tense moments where you actually get a sense of fear, or they attempt to provide you with a sense of fear, you're given more dimly lit sections, and it feels more tense and claustrophobic, which is incredible and an incredible thing to do. But it's just like I said last week with with the big sick it doesn't matter how good your cinematography is or your your color spectrum or your lighting though that definitely really helps the story is the most important part and it's just such a shame that because it's been stretched so thin I am mother doesn't get to deliver so much on that 
Yeah, mm-hmm. and it's almost the antithesis of The Big Sick, where the cinematography in The Big Sick was nothing to write home about, yeah. and it wasn't anything that you could discuss because of how simple it was. But we really, really loved The Big Sick and yes. its um, plot because of how real and um, uncritiqued it was. Whereas yeah. with this, we have the opposite, where we really, really, really love the visuals in this movie, but it's just let down by the plot. Yeah, and I think that's a really nice way that this has turned out, where we actually have two opposing films week to week, which was it was it wasn't intended, but it ended up being quite good as a reference of uh, contrast. But yes. with that said, we should probably start wrapping up this oh, week's episode. <laughs> Hopefully you guys got last week's hint, um, which was another film where a woman is reliant on technology to live. And the hint for next week's episode is another film where our hero is longing to see the world out there, but their family doesn't want them going against the tide, but instead wants them going with the flow. Really intrigued to see if anybody guesses this one. I hope people do. Like, genuinely, I really hope people do. I really hope people have been guessing as well. Like, yeah. I feel like this is a fun little game to play. Even if you're not, you know, putting a comment in or telling us what your guess is, I hope you're at least in your head thinking about what other movies it could be. Yeah. Um, I know that not knowing the answer for a whole week can be frustrating sometimes because you just you're like oh I feel like I can get it but I'm not sure and I'm gonna be thinking about it all week but then like hearing the hint and how it relates back to the last movie I hope it's been like a little bit of like a little satisfying reveal for you guys I hope so too but now that that's all said and done I think we will wrap it up for this week hope you enjoyed let us know if you did if you didn't feel free to send us feedback I personally love receiving feedback as long as it's, I wouldn't even say kind, but as long as it's constructive feedback, I'm more than willing to take it on. We're very love new at this. <laughs> yeah, we're very new at this, so hopefully we can get better and hopefully you all enjoy this enough so that you keep listening because we really love doing it. With that all said, see you next week. See you next week.